I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in today. Today is another in our series of ongoing Chalk Talk videos where we t discuss various topics around the storage industry. Today we're going to focus in on solid state disk or SSD. Uh, joining me to help uh, with that conversation is John Scaramuso, president of Smart Storage Systems. John, thanks for joining us today. Great to be here. Thank you. So one of the things that we hear a lot about is how do I put SSDs in servers? And I think uh, users are looking for kind of what to look for type of thing. So just right off the bat, what are top three or four things that they should be looking for in, uh, in a server class SSD? That's a great question, and, and there is a lot of confusion out there. Let me, let me start by saying what the traditional things that people look at. Okay. So first of all, uh, cost is always important. Performance is important. <clears throat> and, uh, and capacity. And these are, these are the things that hard drives, really, the traditional storage medium, have people, that's how they pick. How, how big is it? How fast does it go? How much does it cost? The biggest problem we have right now with SSDs is there's one more very important one. It's called endurance. It's how many times you can write to the device. And this is very application specific. It's causing a lot of confusion. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, talk about that a little bit. Uh, what are some things that the, uh, th those same people should be uh, avoiding or mistakes that they should be avoiding uh, as they select these uh, server class SSDs? All right. Well, you know, let me, let me just draw another little graph here that might help um, with that. So if I look at uh, the cost of an SSD versus the endurance, which is the key difference between an SSD and an HDD, uh, we essentially have three major cost points in the industry. One is uh, multi-level cell, MLC. Uh, it's mostly used for consumer uh, applications. And then there's something called EMLC. And then something called SLC, single-level cell. And if I look at these, uh, it's a very clear trend where as you go up in endurance, you go up in cost. And, of course, the, one of the biggest uh, mistakes that people make is that They've got cost always first on the list, and it dominates, and they buy the lowest sure. cost SSD, but it may not necessarily have the right endurance for their application. Okay. So it, it, as they start to look at this, and in the server class, we've seen a lot of different, let's call them architectures that people can choose from. Uh, what architecture should people be looking at as they, they look at a server SSD? Well, one of the great things about SSDs, uh, just like hard drives, is they're standardized, uh, they're reliable, they're hot swappable. Um, and uh, what we saw early on in the SSD uh, industry is that the infrastructure of the servers, the boxes themselves, didn't necessarily have uh, the, the capability to handle the speeds of an SSD. So mm -hmm. the RAID controllers, the, uh, the, the pipes that come out of the back, the interconnectivity uh, uh, was not fast enough. So if you're bu building a system that you want to use SSDs and be competitive, you really need to make sure your infrastructure is fast enough. Okay, and so that, that, that sort of early days is what sort of drove the, the early PCIe guys, and now with the advancement in storage controllers, we're seeing uh, a, a better adoption in the SSD space? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's very clear that the, uh, the PCIe-based uh, SSD gained popularity by virtue of the fact that the storage infrastructure was just too slow for the traditional SSDs. Uh, so the PCIe bus circumvents, if you will, the whole storage infrastructure. The problem with that, it circumvents the whole storage infrastructure. So <laughs> all of the technology we've developed over the years and, and the advantages we have relative to modular storage, standardized storage, hot swappable storage, uh, virtualization, um, uh, backup, duplication, all those things that are valued in the, in the storage world were really not capable in the, SS, in the PCIe world. So as, as people look to create new architectures for uh, their servers, they want to go and build the traditional architectures with capable speeds so that they can handle the standardized SSDs. Okay. So what's the big deal about endurance? What, what, I mean, this is all under warranty. Shouldn't I just throw it out and go to another one? <laughs> well, as if you look close in the fine print, you'll find out SSDs are warrantied on how many PE cycles they have. Mm -hmm. So they may have a five-year warranty for workmanship, but they, are, they may be, if it's an MLC drive, only 3,000 PE cycles written to it. So you could potentially, if you pick that SSD and your application does more writes, you could potentially burn that SSD out in months and you're not going to get warrantied uh, replacement. Uh, but the problem is, this is because this is the difference between what we're so used to in the past and now with SSDs, is some people are just not focusing on that and going for the cost metric. 
Okay. And so then, and that, does that make a, I guess that makes a real big rip and replace problem uh, within the environment itself. Absolutely. And I think there's another little uh, chart that I want to put up here. Uh, if, if this is, you know, PE cycles and this is node. So we, let's just start with the uh, 3X node from um, flash th uh, 35 nanometers. We've gone to the 2X node, 24 nanometers. We go down to the 1X node, which is 19 and, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, 16. Uh, if, the, if the requirements uh, that people had are here, uh, early on in the flash world, uh, there was excess endurance just because it was more conservative process. Mm -hmm. So people may have bought some early low-cost SSDs and say, hey, they work fine. But as we move down the cost curve and, and, and the, uh, the, the node size of, of flash, that margin's going away. And people are going to be very surprised that their applications are going to start uh, breaking, essentially, well before... Uh, their life cycle anticipated. So the effort to drive down cost of SSD can, al can also drive up uh, the, the risk of endurance issues. Absolutely. So if, if I buy one MLC drive that's rated at 3,000 P cycles, but my application needs 30,000 P cycles, I might have to replace that drive five times in the course of its uh, useful five-year lifetime, the server's lifetime. That's actually way more expensive uh, than getting a drive that you know may actually be tuned exactly to where I need it to be. Okay. The problem is is that cost continues to go up uh, on this curve, and so you know what what the industry really needs is the ability to take that cost of an MLC drive and extend the endurance out uh, towards the highest levels. That's really where our focus as a company is, okay. and that's what our Guardian technology uh, provides. It allows customers to go out and actually get the endurance they need without going up the cost curve. Well, it, it seems to me that the capabilities to do this obviously are important today, but as we shrink down the lithography, that's going to be just come a, a critical differentiator, isn't it? A absolutely. In fact, I don't really see how you can survive without it. You have to be able, you have to have technology that allows you to extend the endurance of the flash. Otherwise, you're not going to get down that cost curve or you're not going to make useful devices. Okay. So going all the way back up to the top, it, it, it seems like what we want to do is, is change our order here. We want to start people looking at endurance first, uh, matched to their application, and then start worrying about capacity, performance, and, and the cost. Absolutely. And again, any, anywhere from a video server to a file server to a virtual desktop, uh, all the way up to online transaction processing requires very different amounts of writing. And unless you're really uh, tuned into exactly what your application is, you can make a big mistake. Okay. Well, thanks for joining us today, John. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in today.